Okay, so we're going to talk about the mole concept today, but what exactly is a mole? We usually use moles uh, to help quantify really tiny things in the world of chemistry. Now, usually it acts as a bridge between the microscopic and the macroscopic world. So in a way, every one mole of a substance will contain, contain 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd number of particles. These particles could either be your molecules, atoms, ions, formula units, and whatnot. And that uh, this number is called Avogadro's number. So it strangely sounds like Avogadro's number. So just a little bit of a joke. What do you get when you cut an avocado into 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pieces? You get a guacamole. Get it? Because mole, guacamole, they sound alike. Okay, moving on. So, um, eh, we can actually use the concept of the mole and in turn the molar mass to help us quantify or more or less have an idea as to how, uh, how much mass do these, uh, these substances have. And that it's also important that you take note of your atomic mass in the periodic table of elements. So as we do this lecture, it's important that you do have a periodic table of elements with you. So the molar mass of carbon, carbon itself, the chemical, the element rather, is 12.01 grams per mole. Where did we get this number? We got the number itself from the atomic mass and that we related it to, to the mole concept. And that in turn, oxygen will have 16.00 grams per mole. Now, if you ask us about what the molar mass of carbon dioxide is, what you do is that you just simply add the different atomic masses with respect to the number of atoms found in the chemical formula, and eventually you get 44.01 grams per mole. Remember to keep your answers to four significant figures. So this is a short activity that you can do to help exercise uh, the relationship between atomic mass and molar mass. So hydrogen will have an atomic mass of 1.008 AMU. And in a way, if we take that into consideration of the molar mass of hydrogen, it will have this particular uh, molar mass. Same for oxygen, sodium. For sodium chloride, we had to add the atomic masses of sodium and chloride and that eventually, if, we're like, we were, if we relate that to molar mass, simply have to change the unit. Same with water, and same with this last uh, compound right here. So hopefully you're getting this part, but you simply just have to add the different atomic masses to eventually get your total molar mass. So this is just a short exercise, which contains the greatest number of atoms, one mole of copper or one mole of gold. In this particular question, you have to relate the concept of Avogadro's number. Remember that one mole of any substance contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd number of particles. So with that, which one of the two will have the greater number of atoms? My dog's already answering the question. And it got it wrong. <laughs> the correct answer would have to be both. Both will have an equal number of atoms because as we can say, every mole will have a fixed quantity of particles. What about between one gram of copper and one gram of gold? So here we're trying to relate mass now. My dog doesn't know the answer, but obviously you have a chance. Now, the actual answer is that with relation to mass, if we actually compute for the number of atoms, copper will end up having more atoms because of the greater um, molar mass that it has. So we can actually use the mole concept to convert grams and moles and vice versa. So here we're going to have a short exercise as to how to convert 10 grams of carbon dioxide to moles. So again, you're looking for the number of moles. So you take your given, 10 grams of carbon dioxide, and you multiply that to a conversion factor. What information do you have using your periodic table of elements? Well, you would have to have your molar mass of carbon dioxide, which is 44.01.
After that, remember that since grams is the unit of this one, you would want the denominator of your conversion factor to actually be in grams as well so that you can cancel this out. And what you want in the numerator is what you are looking for, which is based on the problem, moles. So with that, one mole of carbon dioxide, for every one mole of carbon dioxide, you have 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide. So with that, simply follow your PEMDAS, or in this case, mole divide 10.0 divided by 44.01, and you will get 0 0.227 moles of carbon dioxide. So in this case, remember that uh, keep your answers to four significant figures. Now, what about the next question? The next question is asking us to convert uh, 0.5 moles of carbon dioxide to grams. In this case, what do you do? You ha you're given is your 0.5 moles of carbon dioxide, and you're looking for grams. So what you want to have on the numerator is the grams of carbon dioxide, and below in the denominator is some way to cancel out the mole. Simply multiply these two and you would get 22.0 grams of carbon dioxide. Or if we're following four significant figures, there should be one more number over here. So what about this one? Converting 10 grams of oxygen, of uh, oxygen molecules to moles. So uh, what do you need? You would have to need your molar mass of your oxygen. So in this case, O2. So therefore, you have to multiply 16 by 2 to get the actual molar mass of your oxygen molecule. So in this case, you were given 10 grams, the same, same baloney. You want to cancel out the grams, so you want to put this on the bottom. Then you have one mole over here. So simply divide 10 by 32, and you get 0.312 moles of O2. So hopefully, um, if you still have questions about this, feel free to email me. Now, at the same time, we can actually relate that to the number of particles as well. But we also have to consider the number of atoms in the formulas when we get to this part. So here, we'll be using Avogadro's number heavily for this set of problems. So let's focus on the first problem. Let's just... Uh, wait, that's a screenshot tool. Nope. Right. Just going to use my toolbox, but while we're waiting for my paint toolbox, we're being asked for the number of carbon dioxide molecules in 100 grams of the same compound or other substance. So, same baloney. You take note of your given. You, multi you have to multiply to the conversion factor of mole and grams. So, you want to make sure that you have the proper placements of your denominator and your numerator. You want to get the mole first. You want to get the mole first, so you want to keep the grams at the bottom. But siempre, this can be interchanged depending on the problem set. And then up next, you want to multiply that to the number of, rather to your Avogadro's number, so that you put the mole unit here, canceling out this one. Of course, uh, doing your PEMDAS, multiply all the numerators first, and eventually divide it by the denominators, and you get this one, this number right here. Now, the next problem is asking us about the number of carbon atoms in 100 grams of carbon dioxide. Well, first, you have to take note that you have to find out first how many carbon dioxide molecules are there in your, uh, in your sample, in your 100 grams of carbon dioxide. So we just take the answer from the previous one and then multiply it to a, to a different conversion factor. You would notice we put, we have molecules right here. And remember that for every one molecule of your carbon dioxide, how many carbon atoms are there? For this particular conversion factor, you have to go back to the formula. Let's look at CO2. How many Cs can you see in CO2? That was pretty much a tongue twister, but not yet. So again, how many Cs do you see in CO2? There's only one. 
So that's why we have one carbon atom here for every one molecule of CO2. Now, don't get this confused with Avogadro's number. This particular conversion factor here will be used for looking for specific, for specific numbers of atoms, like one element in a compound, usually. And we end, obviously end up with this particular uh, number. What about the next one? We're being asked for the number of hydrogen atoms in 100 gram sample of carbon dioxide. So again, what do we use? We first use the total number of molecules of your carbon dioxide. So after that, you look, you look, you look, you look for the conversion factor between molecules and atoms. But in this case, remember, molecules and atoms. So for every one molecule of CO2, for every one molecule of CO2, how many oxygens do you see? Look at the formula. Look at the one that I'm pointing at, the formula itself. Don't look at anything else. How many oxygen atoms do you see in the formula? CO2. So therefore, it is two. That's why we have two atoms here. Because for every CO2, for every one molecule of CO2, you can see in the formula that there are two oxygen atoms. So after that, Simply, simply multiply these two together. So 1.37 times 10 to the 24 times two atoms, and you get this particular number. Okay? Miss, but why doesn't it total to that one? Well, in this case, you have to ignore. It doesn't have to total to this one in this case. What about this one? What is the mass of magnesium chloride? that contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd chlorine ion. So here we're specifically asking for chlorine ions. Let's remember that the molar mass of MgCl2 is 95.21 grams per mole. So what did we do here? First, we were given 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd chlorine ions. So that's our given first. You always write down the given first when you try to solve for your, uh, for your, maybe even for what you're actually trying to look for. Then afterwards, you want to convert this into mole because eventually we are trying to look for your, we are eventually trying to look for your gram. So we have to bridge that first. You have to convert it to mole. So you have to divide it by Avogadro's number. Afterwards, you now have your mole. Now, what do you want to do next? You obviously still want to go to your grams, but first, instead of just chlorine, you have to relate it to magnesium chloride. So in this case, you want to cancel out your chlorine, so canceling this numerator here. And eventually, remember that, where did we get this two anyway? Where did we get two moles of chlorine? Remember your formula, MgCl2. For that, for every one mole of MgCl2, there are two moles of chlorine. Miss, why did we use moles? Because we need to figure out a way to cancel the numerator. And using atoms will not cancel out uh, the mole if you use the unit of atoms, okay? So when you specifically use your uh, units, you have to find a way to eventually reach your final answer, to reach your target objective, which is in this case, grams. And there is no direct conversion between grams and atoms in this case. So yeah, for every one mole of MgCl2, we use two, we have two moles of chlorine. Afterwards, so this is your numerator, we want to find grams of MgCl2. So having mole of MgCl2 will provide us a clear way to simply multiply it to the molar mass of MgCl2, which is uh, 95.21 grams per mole. And eventually, we arrive at the final right here. So anyway, if you guys still have inquiries about this presentation, kindly send me up an email about the specific slides that you are confused at. So in a way, I can help you. I can help you address those concerns specifically. So just hit me up over the weekend. It's fine by me. I'll try to answer as best as I can. And I will see you next time. 
At this point, I am figuring out how to stop recording this, so this will just end abruptly.